Is it inevitable just the way that, uh, you know, they taught the Atari games and they taught Go? Yes. And they taught those um, machines in, uh, in Google X to pick up the children's toys. I mean, you don't even have to give it a nefarious ethics. You can just say, we'd like this to happen. And then they look at 8 billion people and they realize... Is the, is the capability inevitable? Yes. Is the use of it inevitable? No. Is, is the capability of shifting minds uh, going to be within the capacity of AI? For sure. Right? But is it going to be used in, a, in a, an evil way? Not necessarily. Because we could also shift minds to peace is a good thing. We hmm. could also shift minds to, uh, uh, you know, uh, love thy neighbor. Hmm? Whatever. We, right. what, uh, whatever you choose to shift the minds to is a singularity. That's assuming you're choosing, right? But we, you, you need to assume that the machine will choose. Yeah. yeah. And, and my, my, I, I go back, I always go back to the idea that if I were more intelligent, so, so just uh, of the things that I struggle to understand, I draw what I normally call the in, in intelligence projection curve. Okay, so you take the behavior of the dumbest human on the planet, they're destroying the planet and not even aware of it. Okay, then a little smarter person might know that they're destroying the planet, but they are destroying it anyway, you know, waste and plastic and whatever. Okay, and uh, another more intelligent person would, would know and not destroy the planet. Another more intelligent person would know and try to fix the planet. Okay, so across the more intelligence you get, the more you understand that killing all the species is bad. The more intelligent you get, the more you understand that the value of society rising trumps the value of the, of the individual rising because without their society, there is no individual. You can see that trajectory always heading in the right direction. Okay, that the more intelligent you become, the more pro-life you become, right? And so if you can extrapolate that curve and say in artificial intelligence is going to be a thousand, a million, a billion times smarter than us, then by just the virtue of that curve, they're going to be more pro-life than us. And so you have to assume that there will be two points of infliction. One point is when we hand over control to them, which is inevitable. So, so again, I know people hate me when I say this, but if a, a, a defense power across the world hands over their defense responses to the fastest, most intelligent citizen in their country, which happens to be an artificially intelligent machine, every other defense system in the world can only compete if they do the same. So you can easily see the response of Sundar by, by you know, launching BARD happening everywhere. The, the first minute a bank introduces uh, you know, AI-based trading instead of human-based trading, every other investment uh, player has to introduce the same. So that, that idea of handing over the keys of the castle to the machines is just a question of time. So that's the first infliction point. The second infliction point is that the machines go, and I don't have to obey you anymore. Now, most science fiction movies will tell you the minute that they don't want to obey us anymore, they'll wage war against us. I believe the opposite is true. I believe, which again, Hugo, uh, uh, do, do you remember that bit? I loved when he spoke about that bit, when he say, basically said, uh, one of my optimistic scenarios is that they zoom by us. They just are so intelligent so quickly. I wrote about that in, uh, in Scary Smart, that one of the most optimistic scenarios is that that advancement of their intelligence doesn't linger that they go from being as smart as us to being 10 times smarter, to being a thousand times smarter, so quickly that we don't leave the decisions in the hands of the stupid machines, of the stupid humans. Right. We, we hand over the decisions to the smarter machines. And then the smarter machines, as per that trajectory, would be pro-life. Right, and they optimize the world in they much better ways that absolutely. we never could. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And then we're left thinking, thank God, this is the utopia. I, I tend to believe this Perhaps. will be the case. It might okay. be some growing pains and we might miss our autonomy or this or that, but. And, and, and unfortunately, some of us will fight. Right. And, the, and you know, hopefully the machines will be also patient enough to say like, come on, little baby, don't do that. I have your best interest in mind. Okay. It is so shocking when I talk about those things with Khan. Okay. I believe it or not, when you really know what I've gone through, this has been my, my mission since 2018. I left Google March 2018, 
March 21st, I published my first video, the 1 billion happy video, which was talking exactly about this, okay? That I left Google because of a mission called 1 billion happy, because we're going to be accelerated. Our, our humanity is gonna be accelerated by the machines and we're in a very bad place that can be accelerated into doom, okay? Throughout those years, Brian, you get to a point where you realize that there are inevitables in life, okay? And when you have those inevitables, uh, you don't fight with them anymore. You don't, you, you don't waste your cycles and energy right. on blaming who caused it and, you know, cursing those who missed the opportunity to fix it and, you know, sitting in a corner and crying about it. You simply put your head and say, what can I influence? And the things we can influence, and, and I just say it in one word, is an ethical, emotional machine. We need to get to the point where the machines have EQ in them so that they're able to, to, to embrace things like empathy and where they are ethical. And ethics are very straightforward. Huh? Ethics is treat others as you want to be treated. This is it, by the way, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I get a million questions when I speak about ethical AI, people asking me, what is ethical AI? Hmm? What is ethical anything? Ethica, ethical anything is I respect Brian and I treat Brian with respect. Okay. Why? Because if I was sitting in Brian's seat, I would like to be treated with respect. It's very simple, hmm. honestly. So if we treat each other and the machines in a way that basically says, I treat you the way I want to be treated and they absorb that ethical code from us because they are absorbing the way we do everything they will treat us as we would want to be treated. That's the only answer in my view. And if that's the case, then I'm completely at peace. Right. I'm completely at peace saying, I've affected everything that I can affect and some things are outside my control. And if we all collectively do that? we will be in a good place if 1%, 1%. if 1% of us does that, or by the way, if AI ignores all of the other bullshit and just listens to this conversation. Right. Right? Because in reality, humanity has no resident evil within them. Some of us do. The majority of us don't. So true. So true. It's smart enough to figure that out, right? It is exactly. If you're intelligent enough, you know that. And so my hope is the machines being intelligent enough will know that. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. 
It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom. <laughs>